Uh, for our next um, panelist, I'm pleased to welcome a well-known advocate of individuals with autism, filmmaker, actor, and creator of WrongPlanet.net. He's been featured by CNN, The New York Times, The Washington Post, The Los Angeles Times, and Good Morning America. He contributed as a consultant for the TV series The Bridge and worked with Diane Kruger on developing her character. Wrong Planet has more than 70,000 registered members. 100,000 100, registered members. And its, and, and its discussion forums contain millions of messages. Please welcome Mr. Alex Blank. Yeah, I guess you guys used the bio from the last time I saw it. Which uh, was, uh, I guess there were less people that had signed up. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Ron. Not very many people. I think there'd be more. Well, I started it when I was 17. I was actually diagnosed with Asperger's when I was nine, and I went online to try to find other people like me. And needless to say, back uh, then, uh, there weren't really any other people that I could find. So uh, I had to go online to find other people. Now you can just go to a program like CIP and you have other people that are you know, in the same uh, space. But you know, for someone who's a teenager who's already going through all those issues that a teen goes through, the compound the fact that you think you're the only one like that and you're alone and like you get this diagnosis that makes you feel like there's something wrong with you. Um, it's hard. And I had a, a hard time growing up. Definitely uh, didn't want to go. I refused to go to high school at one point um, because I got bullied so much. Um, which is, which was kind of a shitty situation for my parents because like legally they have to bring their kid to school. Like I think that's like a law. Like, so like they would have to like drag me to the car and like <laughs> bring me to school and like uh, you know I was actually really like depressed and I oddly enough was not doing that poorly in school um, I I refused to do homework um, which you know because honestly like what's the point um, at least that was my mentality and and you know like I, I but I was so smart that I still managed to like get good grades on the tests despite not doing the homework um, oh shoot I was gonna set a timer. set a timer so for 15 minutes right that's how long I have to talk for like 13 <laughs> <laughs> is it 13 yeah. <laughs> all right well you know, <laughs> um, and you know uh, here I, I thought you know since you uh, had a keychain thing that I would share what's on my keychain um, are you guys interested in seeing that yeah. Yeah. My Jaguar, this is all support. Um, this is for my P.O. box. Um, and these are for my house. And this, and this is actually a handcuff key. And I keep that as a symbol. Well, actually, no, actually, I keep that in case I get arrested and need to take the name. So, but anyway, so there you have my keychain. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Anyway, um, so uh, I created this website, and you know, immediately it, it just became incredibly popular. Um, other people like me wanted to go on and find other people that they could talk to. Because when you're in a situation like this where your, your mind operates on a totally different level from everybody else, uh, it's refreshing to find other people who you can relate to. I'm sure that everyone here can relate to the feeling of being alone and then finding other people that they can relate to. Because it, it's very empowering. Um, and, and I think this brings me to the main topic of this uh, panel, which is the, that transition to adulthood. And for me, that was something that really happened, you know, and it sort of happens very quickly. You know, you, you're a kid all of a sudden, and then, I mean, well, not all of a sudden, you're a kid for quite a bit of time, and then all of a sudden you're, you're an adult, and you have to do adult things. And for some reason, you, you know, in school they don't really teach you any of the adult stuff. I never understood this. Like, for instance, every day in math class, my math teacher, my algebra teacher is like, you're going to be using algebra every day in your life. And so far, I have yet to have a day where I've used algebra. <laughs> like, so, and yet, they don't teach you, like, they don't teach you, uh, you know, you should, you know, to make sure you pay your bills on time and, like, how to do taxes. They don't teach you that in school. That's kind of more important than doing algebra, in my opinion. So, I, I think it's, I, well, I mean, it's, I mean, like, you know, some, you, some people don't do that stuff, but, you know, they, get, they, they end up getting it. In trouble, but um, 
I would say that like it's great that there's a program like CIP where they do teach those skills of you know like what I heard about the the roommate thing. Yeah, dealing with people is like incredibly important thing that you're not really taught. I mean, like I think it's because most people do pick up on that. You know, like uh, I think a lot of you guys like who are not on the spectrum um, are sort of innately understand like how to deal with like a tense situation and to de-escalate it. For me, I've had to learn through experience dealing with roommates, dealing with crazy roommates, dealing with you know having to like sort of talk about things and convince people. And, and this is important in job interviews too. For instance, uh, you know, you go to a job interview and you don't have any social skills, uh, you're probably not going to do that well. Which is funny because the job interview should be determining how you are going to be doing at the job, not how good you are at socializing. But here's the thing, guys. Like, honestly, like, this is all stuff that we can learn. And it's stuff that we should learn. Yeah, like, having a good portfolio is great. But you know, at the end of the day, not everyone's going to be like Temple Brandon, where she can just show them their portfolio and get hired. Like, yeah, you know, I think that's an exception to the rule. Yeah, I think employers need to be more sensitive to it. But in the meantime, we, as people on the spectrum, need to make that effort to learn a lot of these things. And honestly, the interview skills are not like that hard. Like, it's a very simple set of like social skills, and like you can just learn them. Um, so that's one thing. Independence. Um, is, I think, the most important thing to talk about in this transition. Um, how many of you guys here are independent? Wait, there's like two people in this. Like, <laughs> how do you, like someone had to bring, the people that aren't independent must have been brought here by someone. I mean, like, oh, you guys are, <laughs> everyone here is dependent on, on some like person that's not here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I know. I, I saw some of you guys walking in here and like ordering food and like pulling out credit cards. So you must be somewhat independent. Um, anyway, um, you know, when I was uh, in high school, uh, I sort of my parents didn't even think I was going to go to college much or graduate from high school because I was refusing to go. And and I just got all this. I created the website and I got all this. Uh, self-confidence from it, and I decided I, I really turned my life around because of that. I was 17 when I created it, and by the time I was 19 and in college, um, I, I ended up applying to uh, quite a few schools that, well, not actually, I only applied to schools in state because my parents were like, yeah, you're going to go in state because that's cheaper. So that's what I did. Um, and <laughs> I accidentally yeah. applied to the wrong semester. Like, I guess, like, school's supposed to start in the fall semester. Like, that's, like, the normal thing. And I guess I applied to the spring semester. So I wondered why I didn't get any acceptance or rejection letters from any of the school. So I called up George Mason University. I was like, hey, uh, why haven't I gotten my letter yet? And they're like, let me see. Oh, well, you didn't apply for this semester. I'm like, really? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, so when are you guys deciding if people get into the semester and they're like, well, we're pretty much almost done with that. And I'm like, could you uh, decide for me um, for this semester? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll call you back. And they called me back 15 minute, minutes later and they're like, so we reviewed your application and you're in. And I was like, that, that, I wonder how that happened. That was pretty quick. So that was pretty cool. Um, but, but the point that I'm bringing to, you know, a, a little long-winded way of getting to it, but the point that I'm going to make is the fact that when I got dropped off at college, it, I was completely dependent on my parents up until that point. And then, you know, I was still dependent on them because, you know, they paid for my meal plan and whatnot. But um, once I got dropped off at college, my dad's like, helped me move my stuff. And he's like, all right, I'll see you later. And he, like, drove off. And, you know, he lives two and a half hours away. So I literally had to live on my own and, like, deal with all these things that I had never dealt with before. And, and that was so important for me. I think a lot of parents... And someone else mentioned this: are they don't they don't have enough faith in their kids, so that they're a little overprotective. And I, I apologize if you guys are offended by me saying that to you, but like honestly, like you need to let go at a certain point. And um, if my parents hadn't dropped me off at college, like you know, I would not be here today speaking like this. You know, I probably would still be dependent. You know, if I had gone to community college, I don't know what my life would, like, would be like. But you know, I live literally. 3,000 something miles away from my parents. Um, uh, have my own apartment, obviously, because, you know, um, my own car, um, my own police handcuff key, 
which a lot, most most people don't even have. You know, that's it's hard to get those. They're they're very. Uh, I, I, hopefully, there are no police here that are going to confiscate it afterwards. Anyway, um, <laughs> but like I, you know, and I work, you know, I've worked in a television industry. I'm working in the film industry right now. Um, I, you know, I, I did all this stuff on my own. But at the same time, I still struggle on certain things. Like, my executive functioning is absolutely the worst. In fact, um, I was supposed to go to dinner tonight, like, <laughs> with uh, some people, and, they, and I got texted today and was with a confirmation, hey, are you still coming over for dinner tonight? And then I was like, oh, wait, no, sorry. I have uh, to speak of this thing. Like, I totally scheduled dinner without thinking about my schedule. You know, like, that's, like, not very good for someone who's... Um, supposed to be independent and doing stuff. So we do have like, uh, what's the word? Weaknesses? Deficits? deficits? That sounds like so bad. We yeah, deficits. Uh, struggle challenges. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? But at the end of the day, I still ended up getting here, and you know, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job giving you guys a speech. So. <laughs> You know, I recently, uh, I, another thing is, is, is adult relationships. Uh, having, you know, a lot of times this is sort of glossed over and not really talked about. Parents parents don't want to talk about this because they think it's weird that, you know, their kid's going to, you know, go off and have sex or, you know, get married or whatever and have kids or whatever. But, like, you know, that's an important thing that, you know, humans have to deal with. And, you know, I, I find that, like, a lot of times, especially guys, and girls on the spectrum have absolutely no clue what to do when they get to college and are trying to date. Um, and that's something I personally had to learn myself. So, you know, and now I, I help people with that situation, but there's really hardly any resources out there where people are being taught to uh, go on a date properly. And, you know, a lot of times parents give, like, the worst advice. Like, honestly, like, my mom's advice on what to do on a date would, like, result in me never having a girlfriend or anything. Like, if I followed my mom's advice, like... And I also spent, a, like, I feel like I'd spent a lot more money going to fancy restaurants and not getting anywhere. Because, um, I mean, this, you know, like, I think it's probably, there, there's other ways. Well, anyway. Um, so I have three minutes left. Um, um, and in that last three minutes, I think one topic that I, I really, and this sort of ties in with dating, like, failure. I think that people view failure as a bad thing. Well, expect, like even in dating, like you, if you're not failing, then you're probably not doing it right because you need to be failing to be learning what to do right and to be learning from those failures. In fact, I'm a big advocate of failure. I love failure. When I fail at something, I'm like really happy because I like learned a life lesson and now in the future, I'm going to be able to better deal with the situation. However, a lot of people have the wrong mentality with failure. They see failure, and they get devastated and don't want to try again. And, and especially people on the spectrum, because, you know, they're, they're used to being, uh, feeling like failure, you know, and feeling that failure is a bad thing, you know? But in reality, failure is, like, the best way to learn things. Um, you, know, I, you know, I think Michael Jordan wrote a book and, like, talked about how, you know, he failed so many times. He, he failed more times than, than you try. I, that's something he said. And, and that's... People who are truly exceptional fail a lot. And, you know, they fail at jobs. They get fired. They, that doesn't make you worthless. That's not who you are. That's an experience everyone should be going through so that they can grow. And when you grow, um, you grow from that failure. No, if you do everything perfectly, you're not going to grow or change because there's nothing that you're going to calibrate in your personality and in, in the way that you interact um, because... If you're always succeeding, you're just going to stay the same and never get better. Um, so you need to be trying to do things that are outside of your comfort zone. Um, especially you guys on the spectrum here, you guys need to really uh, go outside your comfort zone. Feel uncomfortable. If you feel like really comfortable in what you're doing and are not worried about yourself and are not failing, then you're going to stay stagnant. And that's probably the worst thing that can, can happen. So, I mean, in conclusion, I have one minute and one second left. Um, so I will talk about, um, hold on, what else do I have to talk about? I only have 53, so shh. This is, I'm wasting time right now. Oh, oh, role models, guys. You need to, like, I would, I would love to be role models to you.
you guys. You know, I've talked to some of you guys here, and hopefully we'll be able to exchange contact information because I love talking um, to people who are, you know, younger than me, are in college right now, because or you know, trying to get a career. But I've been through all those struggles that you guys are having right now. Like, if you if you met me when I was your age, like you probably I'd probably be more similar to who you are right now than who I am right now. Um, and, and I would I would be way nerdier, for instance. I've, I've, I've cultivated a more hip and cool sort of air about myself, like more <laughs> hipster. Like I have like on Air Jordans and like like Levi's skinny jeans and like a hip t-shirt. Um, I know some of you guys have like are not like that. I used to be like that. I used to be like the nerdiest. I was nerdier than the way any of you guys are dressed, actually, which is actually pretty pretty nerdy. Like, <laughs> like we're worse than anyone here. Like, um, so like yeah. So like, all of these things are important. Um, I hope everyone signs up for WrongPlanet.net so you can like talk to other people like yourself. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was uh, the please wraps up sign is is being held up, and my phone is buzzing. So I have two forms of feedback.